Dallas Cowboys. He is also the owner of the Philadelphia Soul, five or six golf courses, ESPN Zone, and everything else he's got. He is, ladies and gentlemen, Ron Jaworski. Let's hear it for Dallas. An honor for me to, to mingle with the Philadelphia fans. You know, when I came here in 1977, quite honestly, traded from a then Los Angeles Rams, I didn't know quite what to expect from Eagle fans. But I can tell you, it's been a love affair that will never end. I've got to be love playing for the fans, interacting, making this my home, raising my kids and now my grandkids in this community. It's a very special place for me. It, it, it really, really is. And I, I, you know, I interact with 31 other NFL teams and as a sports enthusiast, I'm involved with a lot of other teams in a lot of cities. And I'm not gonna be here patronizing, but it's from my heart. The greatest sports fans are in this area. And, and I enjoy what I do now on my radio show uh, with Jody Cameron. We broadcast Tuesday night with incredible guests. Uh, we get incredible crowds over at Rodney's Pub, the Valley for Country Club. We're going to actually take the show on the road a little bit this year. We're going to be in September 30th out of the downtown Country Club where Dick Vermeil, the my coach, who took us to the Super Bowl, will be our guest out in downtown on, 8th, on uh, uh, me, September 30th. Those of you from that area, come out and see us. We'll be out at the Running Gear Golf Club down in the Vineland Millville area. We have a date on that. We're going to take the show on the road. We're going to bring it to you. Much like the Philadelphia Soul have done in this community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much for the incredible support you have given the food we have with 97.5 tonight. Joe DeCamera calling the games along with Tom Goodhines. And in the football league, in fact, I'm so disappointed we lost last week, but I'm almost over it. All right? or, or this, this would have been the greatest tailgate party before a championship game ever, because they would have been played in the Wells Fargo Center, and we would have been here all day drinking. No. Uh, but, but thank you all from the bottom of my heart, my family's heart, for not only the support you give me as a player, my business, and all the philanthropic efforts that, that, that I have with my Jaws Youth Playbook. And it may be the one thing I take the most pride in, is it, using my visibility to raise money that those, for those that are less fortunate. Through my Jaws Youth Playbook, which helps raise money for at-risk youth in our communities, we've raised close to five million dollars. Now for that, I say thank you very much for your incredible support. That's absolutely awesome stuff. Guys, let's talk some football here with Joss. Joss knows I've got the Eagles going 19-0 this year. Let's find out. I think they're gonna be good. I think I'm I think I'm coming in at 12 and 4. Jaws, let's talk some Eagles football. It's wait, wait, wait. First of all, Joe, let me interrupt you one second. Like we do every Wednesday, we do our show. <laughs> you know, we're watching you know, the week one game and the week two game against the Ravens. Like, well, hey, the Eagles played well week one of the preseason, week two of the preseason. I mean, Joe texts me after the game. We're not only going to win one Super Bowl, we're going to win three straight. You know, you know he's all amped up. But I love that. Joe, is, Joe is typical to Philadelphia Eagle fans. You know, just jump on board. So we do the show last week from uh, for Rodney's. I'm, I bring in a big gallon of brake fluid. I said, Joe, we got to put the brakes on this just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. I said your excitement, but calm down. Let me tell you something. I'm 37 years old. I've never seen an Eagle Super Bowl. Let, let a guy drink a drink here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Joe, how good is this team this year? Yeah, it, it, it's a very good team, but I still think there is a lot of unknown. And, and, you know, what I think Chip Kelly has done, in fact, I know he's done this, and I have incredible respect for Chip Kelly, the head coach. He is dynamic, outside-the-box thinker. What I don't know is how good the general manager he is. Yet, I love the procurement of talent. This is a very talented football team. However, I hate to say a buck or however, you're going to have nine or potentially new starters on offense and defense. That's a lot of people to turn over. The only concern I have right now is how quick this offense, the defense, and the outstanding special teams they've shown since Dave Flip, the special teams coordinator, has been there. How quick this group can come together as a team. Because football is the consummate team game. It is not about individuals. It's about 11 guys, coaching staff on every single play, going hand in hand, working in harmony. That's the question that I see on this team. How long will it be 
before they really gel. But the talent level is there. All right, Josh, what's the one move to you that was the worst, and what's the one move that was the best in this really crazy all season? Uh, well, I, I hated to Jeremy McNamara. Uh, I thought but Jeremy... You, but you really give him $11 million? Like, McNamara is the best yes. way to fire him. No, no, no. Did he the back way to re-sign Michael Penn? The Eagles screwed this up last November when they should have signed him. They never should have let him get the free agency. He had proven he had been a great, not only player, but a great citizen. He, he took a one-year contract. They should have known he was healthy, he was productive. They should have got him done in October, November, not waiting to hit the free agency market. To me, that was a mistake made by the Philadelphia Eagles. They should have kept Jeremy Mack. And I don't know if anyone saw the game last night. Alex Smith looks like an all-pro quarterback in Jeremy Mackey on the couch. Now, that's scary. Now, he's got seven balls, two couple touchdowns. And I, so, to me, that was, that was the decision that sits in my ball a little bit to let Jeremy Mackey walk out of nowhere here now. What do you think that the best? Um, I'm, hoping it will, I'm hoping it will be Byron Maxwell. Because we, we all know, we watched that dreadful secondary last year. And we knew that was an area that had to be addressed. And they, and they overpaid for Biden Maxwell because they had to. And when there's a guy out there that's a quality player and you have a need in a position, which the Eagles did, you go out and procure a veteran, proven leader, Super Bowl champion, can play anywhere on the field, literally in the secondary. Byron Maxwell, I think, is proven to be the best addition. I right, guys, we have about uh, 10 minutes or so. We're going to have questions from the audience and just start thinking of some questions. And we'll get to them. Josh, as we look at this coming season, obviously there's a game here tonight. Sam Bradford, and we're seeing a trend around the league. There's an expectation that Aaron Rodgers probably is not going to play tonight. How much would you play Bradford tonight? I would play Sam in the second half. I, I, I don't think Sam can do that. I think he needs work. Any quarterback needs work. Any player needs work. He's in a new system. And I want to see Sam play a half, go in at halftime, Beat the coaches, make some adjustments, come out in the second half and be ready to rock and roll for week one down at Lambs. I would still like to see Sam play. I would like to see him get hit. And oh, by the way, he took two vicious hits last week against the Ravens. He got up both times, albeit a little bit wheezy, uh, but he got up with those hits. But he did take two hits in the five, five balls that he threw or launched a handoff. But I get a little bit worried because the quarterback position is one where you've got to have some, some pain inflicted upon you. I'm telling you, I did it for 17 years, and I couldn't wait to get hit while some of those cobwebs come off and hit your mind in the game of football. Not the practice field where you're wearing shorts and a t-shirt and your helmet. Football is a violent game. It is a violent, violent game. You really don't understand the tempo of it is to play the game on the field, not just to practice t-shirts and shorts. So as we've seen quarterbacks, and it doesn't happen too often, every once in a while there's a QB in his career that has a, a, a certain job. Rich Gannon had it 10 years into his career. Jim Plunkett obviously had it, you know, obviously back to the system. Uh, there, there are others. Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner had it. What do you think the chances are that Chip found something here with Sam Bradford? When healthy, that Sam Bradford can go for a pad 20, 21, 22 in the big board the last few years. Uh, maybe not in the top five, but maybe that 10, 11, 12 range where Flacco's been, where Romo's been, where Eli Manning's been. And there's some Super Bowls that we want for quarterbacks right there. Do you think you can get 9, 10, 11, 12 in the state? Well, I'll go back to the draft five years ago when Sam was coming out of Oklahoma. Sam Bradford was by far not the best quarterback coming out of that draft. He was the best player in that draft. This final year at Oklahoma, he was absolutely phenomenal. They ran the up-tempo offense, 82 plays a game. And I think that's why, why certainly Chip really loved him. He loves the guy that can run that speed offense. The sky was the limit. I thought Sam Bradford would be a, a future Hall of Famer. He had the pedigree of an outstanding quarterback coming out of college. He went to an awful football team, got beat up with the St. Louis Rams, as we all know here. That being said, the pedigree is there. The attributes to play the quarterback position are there at a high level, and the two that I like the most are velocity and accuracy on the quarterback position. When you can not only attack the field from sideline to sideline horizontally, but from end zone to end zone vertically. Sam gives you that ability that is lethal in this offense, the ability to get down the field, and it's going to come down to one thing. And I'm pointing the term, if Sam. Our quarterback is if Sam. If Sam is up there, it's going to be a good year. If Sam is not up there, it could be a trouble here. And uh, I got questions from my uh, Super Star game right, right here. Uh, yellow shirt, hook up you. Please raise your hand. 
And we'll, we'll start moving over here now to begin that process. Um, just a couple more questions here, and then we have questions from the audience. Jaws of defense. From seven, we believe it's strong. A lot of us think it was strong last year. With the improvement, we hope in the secondary, how big is it? I think the defense will be much improved. I, I, I thought last season the seven, front seven was as good as any defensive front seven in football. With the acquisition of Pico Alonso, they, you will see it tonight on the sway. This defensive line is a penetrated defensive line. Big, strong, fast, and quick. This linebacker core may be the fastest bunch in the National Football League. I go down to Carolina with good head up by Luke Eaton. They got guys that can run. But this linebacker core can really, really run. You will see them flying around and striking tonight. Now, to me, that lends great positive feeling about the secondary. Because pass defense is about two things. Pass rush pressure, which I think we can generate, and coverage. Now, also, those two corners will have to cover for three seconds. The ball's coming out 2.1, 2.2. That secondary can run very, very scary. So I think this defense will have a tremendous improvement under Bill Davis' stupid. And Bill loves to be creative. He loves to have the quarterback. And I think there's a lot more pitch in this year than we've seen in the past. Charles, so most of the players today are new to the team. Most of us as Eagles fans are very familiar with. We've seen DeMarco Barrett twice a year. Byron Max has played a lot of games, you know, with the playoffs this season. He threw a lot to really the no, no. He really is. He played one season in Buffalo and got hurt. I'm going to guess you know one person in the audience who watched 16 Buffalo Bills. That's Barrett's daughter. So we turn to you, Josh. Barrett's daughter. 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 Barrett's daughter
how you know the play is. Up until that point, you could have been a rug or a pass. That is impossible to invest. Go right over here, sir, your question, please. Joe, as you played with a lot of really great running backs in your day, mainly Wilbur Montgomery, right? Absolutely. You've also played with some not-so-great running backs. Can you speak about how much it makes Sam Bradford's job easier in a unique Eagles situation where there's not only one great running back, but a stable of running backs? Can you speak on what that does for Sam Bradford and how much easier it makes his job? Uh, it, it's very, very important to balance our offense. So there's a good running game and a good pass game. Many program to play as a pass game. And, and I can think of some of my best years in the National Football League. I had number 31, Will Montgomery, behind me. And the minute I would stick that ball out, man, it was like bees on honey. Here come those bees, they get over with the football. And the minute I would pull that ball out with play action, the Red Sea party. Because these linebackers were playing the play action great. The safeties were hitting up inside, and it just opened up a little bit of space for our wide receivers to run. So clearly, uh, I love the running back, and I love the balance to be successful week in, week out. I also like the tip that he's done with the cover of running backs. Obviously, Ryan now is again. He's another guy who's got to speak. Help, he's got to hold on to football. That's his history. Then he's straight from the Bears' goals. He got three headed monster in the back of it. And you will not see the Marco Murray even do close to 400 touches. I think his number is just going to be about two to 225 in number of touches. You want to have very healthy going in the playoffs, Joe. You hear that? In the playoffs, you want to have the Marco Murray healthy. I like that. He's got a momentum coming in, Jersey. What's up, sir? Hey, Jaws. Uh, with uh, Sproles, Matthews, and Murray, how do you think that Kendrick Barner uh, fits in at all? That's a very good question, Joe. You know, I, I don't see how he's going to make this team. Despite two incredible punt returns, we got Derek Stoles back there, aren't we? Yeah, so, you know, I mean, I'm not quite sure how they can keep Barner on this roster. He's a, he's a dynamic player. He might be getting dangled out there right now with some trade bait. Uh, but this is a very deep football team right now. Because what's the viability of taking a guy like Parker who's not going to make it? It doesn't happen often. But trying to flip him to a different franchise and he has an outside linebacker who's going to work. I think it's a great possibility to have again. I think you're going to see him showcase once again this evening. He strolls and not going to return punts. So you can have uh, Barber back there. He returns another one. I'll tell you, people see two unbelievable returns already. A lot of has been all that great. He's taking it to the house. I think you'll see the same thing again tonight in Green Bay. So if he returns another punt for a touchdown, and, and I agree with Joe, there's a, there's a little lack of depth in the outside linebacker position right now. That's an area that I think she has an issue moving down as the season goes on. Because it's her the Philly shirt. Yes, sir. All right, Joe's uh, first off, I just want to say, I think I speak for everyone when I say thank you for being so loyal to the fans. But also the area. Uh, my question to you is obviously, you believe that the uh, Eagles are going to go to the playoffs. I think we all do. How many wins do you think it's going to take to win the division? Clearly, we hear about the weaknesses all throughout the division, but how many do you think it's going to take for the Eagles to solidify in the NFC uh, season? I think you have to win 12 football games to, to win the division. I think 10 will likely get you in the playoffs, but there are teams. 10 wins in the Union Patriots a couple years ago with that castle, they 11 wins, and they didn't make the playoffs. So, uh, but I think as I look at the, the equitable scheduling now, the equitable talent, uh, I believe 10 would be the end of 12 would be the win position. We're going to back up here. Yes. Hey, Joel. Yes, sir. I'm a giant So, uh, oh. 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 What should the Giants be most scared of in this Eagles team? Not being what, good. what would the Giants be most worried about? Probably the Giants be worried about their secondary. Uh, the area that they've struggled the past couple years has been covering people. They've had a lot of injuries, it's been depleted. And, and this has got a, a very deep Eagles team at the receiving position. Uh, not only is it wide and suit the tight ends, and we all exactly hope Zach gets back as soon as he can. You know, you can put out, you can put out a scrolls in the slot and create some favorable matchups. And I think that'll present some problems to the Giants. Even John Beeson now out. You know, he was a very good cover guy. You're not going to have that cover guy to take his scrolls out. So I think that, that will be the biggest issue. And, and, and the Giants will present some problems to Eagles with their offense. I mean, their offense, Eli Manning last year had a really good second half of the season. 
right now. They're from the Detective Eli. line. Their offensive line didn't really try to uh, attack them in the first round. I still think the whole match is the Detective Eli man. You know, the NXT East is the NXT East. There are, there are no games, no slam dunks. There are teams from the Giants who are the best team in, in football. The Eagles would beat them. There are times when the Redskins are the best team in the division. The Eagles would beat them. So you never really know. The, the, the familiarity makes it tough to beat a team twice. Maybe to a follow up question here, going to your career. Because you know I've seen this many times. I have such unbelievable admiration for anybody who plays football against Lawrence Center. When you're behind center, the LT is right there. Or right there. And he's coming after you. What is that like? Joe, I'm having a good day. That's my first time to tell a big story. But I, I, I'll give you a, a real life story. Buddy Ryan takes over as head coach of Philadelphia in 1986. We have Keith Byers, our first round pick out of Ohio State. I am the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. We go to the game plan meeting. Buddy Ryan installs what we're doing to pass the Texas team. And he goes, ah, Byers. They got this guy, uh, he never got called a guy by his name. 56. He's pretty good. But you're our first round pick. You can handle him. <laughs> so the meeting breaks up and I go to Ted Plum, our offense where I say, Ted, I've been playing against this guy for five years now. You, no running back can block this guy. Look at the tape for five years. No one can block him. Nah, buddy thinks, buddy thinks fires can handle him. So get back and look at the tape on Monday. LT had three sacks. The first play he took he fires and threw him in my lap. The second time he gave him a swim move. The third time he gave him a punch, a spin move, three sacks. Two weeks later, we play the Giants. Buddy Ryan comes to me and says, you know, I think we're gonna slide the line out there and I'm gonna do the same time. I told you that two weeks ago. He was unblockable. Yes, uh, sir, I'm right, sir. Uh, Jaws, uh, I, I was at the conference championship game in 80 with my father. It was a really special moment in my life with him. Uh, and, I, and he was at the 60 championship game. Uh, I just want to thank you for the leadership in your play that year. That was my that, that success. My question is, the Cowboys last year, their success was based on their running game. Not only because Robo threw fewer pass than he usually does, but because even though their defense gave up the same as yards per play, they were on the field for so few plays. I'm tired of hearing people say you can throw any running back behind their line and have the same success. What, do you, what is your opinion of that? I, I still believe the Dallas Cowboys do not have their running back on their roster to finish the season. I, I, I think there's going to be some really good game by the Dallas Cowboys the next couple weeks. If any of watching the preseason games are running games are very effective, with arguably the best offensive line. They get no one in the Leo College, who really was a first round pick. They get it basically for nothing. So they, they have a very good offensive line. You cannot discount the running back. In fact, I had Michael Irvin on our show, Joe and I, uh, a couple months ago, and he's taking the Eagles. Now I'm like, oh my God, that's what I do. That Michael Irvin picked the Eagles. And he made the comparison that when Emmett Smith held out in their 92 or 93 season, or 93 season, and they were 0-2. And they had the same offensive line. So all of a sudden, Emmett Smith comes back, they win the World Championship. So to me, Michael Irvin is crystal clear about having that hardcore, rock-solid running back. So despite all the talent the Cowboys have, they do not have a consistent running back. All right, where's our uh, Michael Jeff, Jeff, back in. Jeff. With uh, all the injuries in the preseason uh, this year in the NFL, do you think uh, the NFL should uh, reduce the preseason games to two games instead of uh, four? Yes, 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 I'm going to hold it like that. I already have the Park Avenue office in the NFL, very angry at me. What else is here? Because I call these games that we look up there. I call them exhibition games. You're paying top dollar. You work hard for your money. You're paying top dollar to go to these exhibition games, and your quarterback's not even on the field. Your running back's not even on the field. I think that sucks. Be honest with you. You, 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 you can't deserve better than you're paying top dollar to go see an exhibition game. If anyone watched the Monday night game down in Tampa, we about Eight or nine minutes left in the game, there was a shot behind the quarterback. There was nobody in the stands. The Philadelphia Soul had more fans than the Tampa Bay 
Kind of up you with the assistant coaching staff. We had Chip Sir running offense, Pat Sir on duty days. There's been a change in some of the coaching positions, particularly in the secondary. So those things are, are good changes because that group wasn't very good last year. They're going to be up coach, but they're going to be an up-tempo offensive team. Chip Kelly is an outstanding football coach. I love outside the box thinking. Not only in the X's and O's of the design of the offense, but what he's doing for his training. And it was kind of interesting. When he came here, we all kind of made fun. Well, the players are bringing milkshakes out to practice. You know, that's how they're going to win. But then when you really drill down and find out what these milkshakes are, they take a DNA of your physical makeup, and they blend these milkshakes to what your needs are. Vitamin B, vitamin C, an inflammation gene that you have. They're genetic milkshakes built specifically for each individual. So when they walk off that practice field, they're taking these milkshakes, you know, not for Mr. Softy, they're actually having a drink that helps replenish all the nutrients in your body. So the sports science is now becoming tremendous, and Chip Kelly is on the cutting edge of this, and it certainly has helped people. They're by far the best condition. Their up-tempo kills people. So I see a lot of good things on the rise of Joe. Now they've got an extra to know, an eagle standpoint, for a longevity of how they're building their program as well. All right, guys, let me tell you what's up ahead. In 10 minutes out there on the main stage, right outside this building, Main stage in 10 minutes, Mike Davis, Anthony, and Darren Ball. So in 10 minutes, head on out there for that. And then right here in 25 minutes, right here at the victory stage, fantasy football talk, Eric Carabell and Rob Ellis. So you got two options coming up in the next 25 minutes. Pick one, float around, guys, go to the French. Ladies and gentlemen, for the right Hey Ron, can I get an autograph?